Detecting if a person is or is not physically present can be useful for a range of Internet of Things and home automation applications, such as automatic lighting and security systems. Today, we're going to look at some common sensors that you can use to detect people, how they work, and when to use each one. The sensors we are looking at are PAR, radar, ultrasonic, and laser. All of these are linked in the guide, so head over there if you want to check out any of them in more detail. All around you right now, there is a bunch of different light, sound, and radiation bouncing all over the place. Each of these sensors work by watching for these things in the physical space, like this studio, and detect when a person causes them to fluctuate or change unexpectedly. The PAR sensor, which stands for Passive Infrared, monitors for changes of infrared radiation. Anything that gives off heat is detectable as infrared, such as the human body. They work by using a pyroelectric sensor, which inside has two halves, kind of like two little windows. Sitting on top is a dome called a Fresnel lens, which directs light coming in from different directions straight into either one of the two windows. If either of the two windows detects more infrared than the other window, an electrical imbalance is created inside the sensor, which tells it that something has been detected. The middle pin goes high when something is detected, and then low when that something is no longer detected, which can be read from a microcontroller like the Raspberry Pi Pico. You can also control the sensitivity and high to low delay time with the onboard trim pots. This one is delay, and this one is sensitivity. The heat from our body radiates as infrared, which makes the PIR sensor great for detecting people but this also makes them susceptible to interference from other heat sources, especially the sun. PARs work best in spaces out of direct sunlight and that don't have fluctuating heat sources, such as fireplaces. But this isn't a problem for our next type of sensor, the radar. Radar sensors monitor for changes in microwave and millimeter wave radiation. They work by first emitting signals at their chosen frequency and then monitor for changes in the signals when they bounce back to the sensor. One big advantage they have over PIR sensors is that they can detect through solid non-metal surfaces, making them handy for putting inside a waterproof enclosure or detecting movement through walls and ceilings. Keep in mind that they don't like metal, so you need to make sure that you're not blocking the front side of these sensors with metal and that the back side is also clear for at least one centimeter. This microwave-based radar operates at around 3 GHz. It is operated much like a PAR sensor. It has an output pin that goes high when motion is detected. However, unlike a PAR, you cannot customize the sensitivity and any delay timing. It needs to be implemented manually in your own code on a microcontroller. That being said, I find this unit to be a great replacement for the trusty old PIR as it costs roughly the same price at only a few bucks, works inside a project box, and doesn't trip up from interference so easily. This is a millimeter wave or MM wave based radar. It operates at a much higher 24 gigahertz. This sensor is similar to, but more sophisticated than the microwave radar, although it does cost more. My favorite feature is that it not only detects people when they are moving, but it also detects people when they are standing still. For example, if I walked into this room, the PIR and microwave sensor would at first detect me but once I sat down and stopped moving, they would both think that I have disappeared. The MM wave sensor is smarter than this and continues to detect my presence even if I'm not moving. This is great for scenarios like keeping the lights on when someone is quietly working at their desk or keeping the lights off in your house when you are physically in bed sleeping. In addition to a high low output pin like the PIR and microwave radar, most MM wave sensors, including this one, include a UART interface for configuring the sensor and reading the detection state over serial. We are able to configure the detection distance and timing and read back a constant stream of detection statuses. There's some discussion about this module on the forums. If you have your own experiences with it, we'd love to hear from you. I found that when this sensor is configured right, it works really, really well. It significantly outperforms a PIR in both reaction time and rejecting false positives, and the stationary presence detection also works quite well, which puts it above the microwave sensor for me. Let's move on to our last two sensors. 
which are used for detecting people in a different way to the previous sensors. All of the sensors so far have been area-based and work across a wide detection area. Ultrasonic and laser sensors are distance-based. They work in a single direction by sending out a signal, which bounces off whatever is in front of it, and measures how long it takes for that signal to bounce back. Distance itself isn't necessarily an indicator that a person is present. However, an unexpected change to distance can be, such as a person walking through the path of one of these sensors in a tripwire setup. A common example of this is when you walk into a shop and somewhere a speaker plays a ding dong tone. You likely just cross the path of an ultrasonic or laser sensor. You could also use the distance measurements from these sensors to detect someone walking up or down a hallway or if someone is stationary in front of the sensor, such as sitting at a desk. This is a PicoDev ultrasonic, and like all ultrasonic sensors, it works by sending out sound waves beyond human hearing, kind of like how a bat uses echolocation. Ultrasonic sensors are cost-effective. This one costs half the price of its laser counterpart, but they do have a shorter range. This one is up to a few meters. Ultrasonic sensors are not affected by light interference, like lasers, However, they aren't well suited to noisy environments, as other sound waves may cause interference. This is a PicoDev laser sensor, which like all lasers, it works by sending out light pulses. Laser sensors are more accurate than ultrasonic, with up to per millimeter readings, and usually have a longer range as well. This module is accurate up to four meters. However, they are susceptible to interference from light in the infrared spectrum, which sunlight contains lots of. So these sensors work best when indoors. Conversely, they aren't affected by sound at all, like the ultrasonic, which can make them a good alternative in noisy environments. We have great guides on how to use both of these ultrasonic and laser sensors, which I've linked in the guide if you wanna check them out. We've covered the most common types of sensors for detecting people, but there are many other ways that it can be done, from combining simple electronic components to using cameras and AI. Check out the guide for a suite of other sensors and components that you can use. If you're detecting people in an interesting way, or if you have any questions about anything from this video, let us know about it in the comments or on the forums. And until next time, happy making.